Hi guys, still quarantine time. Uh, I just wanted to show where I practice right now. Uh, if you will have any questions, I will try to answer some of them. So this is where I practice. And right now I'm working with my both hands, with the left hand and the right hand. And it's very great because you can work uh, on both sides of the hands and that means, you know, you can expect that doesn't matter what kind of the table or position you are, you can uh, expect predictable results. So, this is how my left hand to actually look like these days. Left hand, so I never play, you know. So step by step, it's getting better, you know. And I'm already able to make some skip shots with the left hand, which is nice. You see, I'm already making a scuba shot. So you can practice both hands. Right. Left. Again, right. Left. So it's fun, you know, you can switch your hands and uh, in this way make your practice more fun. So guys, I want to hear your summer questions. Maybe you want to learn some stuff. But now I will explain some things about cubo physics. Let's say I have an object ball and a cube will stay on the bulk line. So I will explain how cube ball and object ball has impact to each other and how you can understand cube ball control with this kind of method. So right now I will play football and you will notice that if I will play <coughs> full to the face, uh, the cube ball will stop early on compared to the object ball because the whole energy... You see, cube ball stops earlier. If you play half ball, yeah, then, uh, you know, cue ball and object ball stops at the exact time. Like this. Both balls are stopping at the same time if you hit half ball. And if you play thin, on the object ball, like one, one four, one third angle, then of course cue ball goes a lot and the object ball stops first. You see, object ball stops first and cue ball still goes. And this is extremely important on safety shots because you know when you play some certain shots, like especially the last light, and you want to make a safety, you need to understand how cue ball and object ball reacts. If you can get a Hubble angle with a side spin, let's say, you can make sure that the object ball and cube ball splits to separate sides. I will show you, like, I want to put cube ball here and here, let's say. Okay, so this safety wasn't that great enough. I wanted to make the object ball right here, so I have to play a little bit quicker this time. Okay, you see, cue ball, object ball, finish at the same time because I got that half angle and this is how I got safety. And this is very useful, especially when you play in safety battles, you want to get cue ball thin because you want cue ball go back to the bulk line and that object ball stop first. If you get thick safety shots, probably you know from your experience that usually the cue ball gets stuck about the middle and you leave the easy position for the, your opponent. So it's very good, you know, uh, to understand this knowledge in your game that uh, thinner sometimes is better than, you know, play half ball or full in the face. But all, of course, depends what kind of things, you know, you have. So, so far, nine people are watching. I will show you how I practice some lineup shots. I will be careful with the camera so it didn't turn. Whew, that's great.
I will put my... So this is the table. This is where I practice. And uh, right now, you just give me a second, okay? I will put the tripod on. Oh, yes. I have to go backwards. One second. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. One second, guys. Doesn't hold that much, but well. Okay, here I have a set. Probably you can see. Hopefully you can see. I will be very, very careful. Okay. Okay, so I want to talk about body balance. <laughs> So let's say I have a straight shot and you feel that you struggle with your two action. So the first thing what you want to do is to make your stance more balanced and wide, okay? Most people which I coach, I can see that they stand a little bit too close next to each other. And it basically means that their body balance is, you know, not good. They don't have enough freedom in their back arm. So when I play the shot, I just have to make sure that I am twisting my body around, my shoulders around like that. In this case, I can expect that my whole body position will be better. And most players, which I coach, like beginners, intermediates, or advanced, really, really struggle with this kind of department. They think that the aiming is bad, you know, that uh, it's a bad day, or something really abstract. Actually, the thing is much more simpler, because usually it means that body mechanics are not correct. So let's say I play shot off the cushion, so you just want to make sure that you have enough balance right here you see so i'm bending my left uh, shoulder and elbow and make lots of freedom here and that for me it's really easy to do uh, deliver two of the three times so i'll play finger let's say and make two back shot around blue ball spot so you just have to make sure that you have freedom in your mind like your long back swing and smooth delivery with lots of freedom in your body this is the key you see and once you have a freedom in your cue action then you can expect that cuba will dance like a spins a lot this is very very important you know so i can make any stupid shot i would like like i have a difficult shot not a difficult shot i have a medium difficulty shot Really important shot, you want to get red ball to the blue ball spot. Let me explain. Just like that, okay? And here what I see from the players that they play too hard. Come on guys, now you don't need to smash. So when you play the shot, you just have to make sure that your stance is nice and wide. You know, you make your stance more open so you can have more freedom in your back arm, okay? And then you stay still on the shot because if you are jumping around then there is no chance you can expect any good result. No chance. Believe me, no chance. And you can read any, you know, tutorial or whatever, you know, until your balance, uh, until your stance balance and your stroke is not good, your grip, your stance, your dress position, nothing will happen. So it's about intermediate, high, advanced stuff, but still, you know, if you're a beginner, you can start to build on your technique like that. So, and you can see, I don't use any power and the cubo is dancing around. Like, I will show you my left hand, okay? Because my left hand is not my strongest, I only practice for the three weeks. Uh, actually, I will talk about one device which I promote already on the channel. It's like a straight aim device, you know, in two weeks, like three weeks ago, I just couldn't make any like a 20 break. <laughs> right now, today, I'm in 96, 91, 83 on the line. The hand direction is not great, so I just want to show for all guys who are just beginners that if you work on your body balance, then you can expect good results. So let's say I have this shot. 
So for me, if I want to make a feedback shot, I just have to make sure that I open up my stance like that. I will try to make a scuba shot. I don't promise that I will get it, but... So, you see? I open myself up. I have lots of freedom, you know? I mean, it wasn't as smooth as a right-hand player, but, you know, I still had lots of freedom. And even if my clutch wasn't that great, I still got the, got the job done. Maybe a little bit scooped, didn't hit to the backspin, you know, so... Lots of freedom, guys. It's very important. So yeah, um, around the leg spot. If you feel lazy that to practice nuka and you feel that oh my gosh, I don't want to, you know, pick up the balls and walk around the table, and you feel that you are a little bit dizzy. My personal record on this exercise is 323. 323, no, 331 actually. I did this like a few months ago where, uh, before the quarantine started in Lithuania. So basically what you do is just basically roll in the shot, replace the black and play again. Just like that. And you can use any ball you like because it doesn't matter. The, the point is to put object ball on the black ball spot. So my record is right now one. And this is how you play. And it's very important because you want to improve your two close cubo control. And then you replace. And it's good because you this exercise is extremely good because you work on your close cubo control, touch, because you need to control cubo well if you want to make your break more easier. And also concentration levels because it's easy to mess up, especially if you pot, 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 and then you think, oh gosh, it's very easy, then you are a little bit careless with your shot approach or you're at least 50 or 100, maybe 200 or something like that, if you are very good. And uh, promise to you guys, if you will practice before tournaments, you're going to be extremely much sharp and around black ball spot, you're going to be strong. So I will just try to do at least 10, just for you guys so you could understand. So, like that, you know. You see how guys I keep smooth? I can play the same pocket over and over again, you know? Replace the black. This time I will play some step shot a little bit. And just basically, you can play this for two, three hours non-stop. And you will surprise how many players cannot play this exercise. They play too hard, they overthink, you know. <laughs> many, many things are happening. I don't use any power, I just play extremely soft and I try to keep my cubo around the middle area so I could control cubo more. Again, I will play stun follow shot so I could get cubo around here. I could get right here, but I just wanted to make more advanced stuff so I can be very precise with the cubo. Again, some follow shot. Okay, this time I lost a little bit cubo, you see. Here was right here, and I now I have to roll in because after the contact, my cubo will go over here. So, Shorter grip, shorter bridge, so I could control and feel it. You see? And again, I'm in the prime position, so I'm already on the 10. I wanted to show this angle. From here, you can go both ways. You can go top spin here, you can go stun, and here, it's a personal preference, whatever you like. A 
nice angle. And this is over and over again, you can practice like that. 13. Again, I had angle. This time I will play stun shot. And also, there is one more variation. You can play all shots to one pocket, and it's gonna challenge your pattern play, your cubo control as well. So, it's you can do this after this exercise where you can play for both corner pockets, you know. So, I can say if you control cubo, you can do whatever you want. Now, I will play again with top spin to get the other side. 16. Okay, I will try to finish 20 and just finish the exercise. And this shot was a little bit more tough because I had a small angle, so I needed to play soft with the long backswing. And again, I'm in the prime position. Okay, I made a 20. I don't, I, would, I don't want to do more because, you know, it's going to get boring. You got the general idea, black is black of the spots. You already got some ideas on how to make your stance more open so you could have more freedom in your back arm. Very important, you know, sorry about my ass. Yeah, you know, you don't want to be like this, that you don't have a follow through. And at the beginning I talked about uh, cubo object context, that if you play full face with the cubo, then of course cubo starts first and object ball goes further. If you play hub ball contact, yeah, then uh, cubo and object ball stops at the exact point. You can use this on your safety shots or whatever position you want to get, okay? And then if you play thin, of course, you know, thin shots, uh, when you play thin, it's very really difficult to control cubo because cubo is dancing and, you know, our old supports are not that easy. So, just get these three points in your game. I'm sure that, you know, you will definitely get lots of benefits. Practice if you have a chance. If you don't have a quarantine in your country, uh, just go to your local club and practice solo. Not play against somebody, but practice solo. Because when you play solo, then you can gain new experience, try new things, you know. Maybe at the beginning it's gonna be a little bit more difficult, but after some time, maybe three, four days, if you get it right, then you can start slowly but surely develop some new positive habits in your game. And this is very, very important if you want to be a good player. So hopefully it helps. Guys, I'm right now filming without any people, so nobody is telling me if somebody asking me a question. So right now I will try to answer your questions. Okay, six people are watching. So it was about 20 minutes live video. Hopefully you enjoy it guys. And uh, I will upload this video on YouTube. So you could... Uh, guys, I will show you, you know, one more thing, you know. Probably you remember that uh, uh, I told you that with the left hand, I made today 96, my highest ever break on the lineup with the left hand. Before three weeks, I couldn't make any 16. So this is the straight aim device. Uh, this is my friend's Vincent uh, device, which is amazing too, by the way, because it helps you uh, individually under, uh, feel and understand your technique at a very deep level, which means like, I will show you an example. Like, this is how it works. This is the chin piece. You don't have to worry about chin piece. It doesn't matter what kind of eye dominance you have. You can simply put, I will show you, okay? And practice like that. So this means that if you do everything correctly, like I will, I will show you. Then chin piece stops. So basically you are, learning body positioning, balance. You're learning a dress position because if you're queuing across the ball, that chin piece will fall out and you will twist your grip. So also some major problems like grip twisting, you know? 
very very important thing and uh, so yeah i mean <laughs> Yeah, this is very good too. I practice every day at home because we have quarantine and cannot go to the club like I, I, I'm alone right now. So everything is legal. Uh, I practice at least 10, 15 minutes every day for the, it's already 20th day. So can you imagine? I mean, 96 break with my left hand. So I will show you my left hand, okay? My grip only like three, four days uh, became a little bit looser. Before I barely can make 60, 70 break, today I made like three breaks over 80, 70, 60, so I felt more free. So um, I will show you with my left hand if you want to. So basically I will set up a basic lineup, you know. Play some shots, left hand. I like I have a little chicken wing, and you know, it's not balanced, it's not perfect, but it's much better than it was like three weeks ago. Come on, you know, go look. You see, like I, I can still play simple shots pretty easily, you know. Something like that. So you, you can see that I can play with the left hand already. So totally great device. I use it already every day. And Vincent has uh, about 475 customers and there is no one complaint. Like there was no people who were complaining about this device, nothing. I mean, you get lots of value for that money which you spent, you know, it's about, cost about uh, 280 US dollars and you gosh you said oh why this device should cost so much money you know uh, why I have to buy, <laughs> buy for this yes fair enough you know you can buy some relatively cheap uh, average queue but if you look long term and you want to build positive habits I totally recommend to take it because it just makes sense you know you can practice at home you can practice at the table you, you see that my left hand is not that bad uh, and in the soon future, we'll make some future videos about how to practice some, you know, um, how to practice with this device and also what was my journey between my like, first day and 30th day. So you will see that my left hand was completely badly. I mean, my wrist was, you know, rigid, my stance was awful, my dress position was shit. So, you know, lots of things. So guys, you know, if we talk about personal coaching, yes, I do everyday personal coaching all around the world. Today I have clients from Finland and Canada and from uh, also from Lithuania, local students, you know, and uh, gosh, you know, I just know that if you practice with a proper coach and I consider myself a proper coach because I'm interested in snooker improvement every single day, you know, you want to improve your mechanics like the way you approach the shot, you know, how to use your body balance, how to control cubo properly. Uh, I mean, I understand that right now it's a COVID situation and uh, most of you guys probably struggle financially uh, and uh, maybe you are a little bit skeptical about online coaching because how the coach can help uh, people uh, improve their games if it is not uh, physically there. Yeah, fair enough. I coach, I coach already online for two years, it's going to be two years at uh, June, and every student, every single student, maybe one didn't got maybe 5% results he got, but every single student got massive results, and doesn't matter, you're a beginner, and to meet my highness, you know, and play the, the, the game you, you can, the best you can, you know, then I'm the, your coach. Mechanics are really, really important if you want to be a super good player. So, yeah. Uh, okay, I see that there are 16 people around, so which is nice. Uh, maybe I will show you some interesting shots because I literally pumped up and I want to show you, give you value, you know.
What sometimes I like to practice on, I will be on this side of the table because tripod is a little bit tricky and I don't want to um, ruin the video. So, what I like to do is to practice my cue action from the spot, black ball spot. That means I will play reverse side and generally right hand side so I could get position for the yellow ball. So, uh, it's a good exercise to do because you know sometimes you have a straight position and you want to get let's say this is the black and i need to get a proper position for for the right right here so if i will play straight shot like you have a top, then i uh, cannot expect a proper position for the red because the angle goes right here you know Okay, so you see the line goes right here and on some tables it could be too slow, on some tables it could be a little bit too fast, very unpredictable position, like 50-50 if you play without side spin. It's much smaller, so basically if you just play good enough speed, you always will get the position. And actually you don't need to hit hard, because if you hit hard, it's really really difficult to control cue ball. So, reverse side, nice and long back swing, and follow through. Okay, so you see the side spin worked. The reason why I missed that shot because I twisted a little bit my grip. So it's, you have to be extremely smooth on that shot. So there should be no tension. So uh, this time I will play with more relaxed way, okay? See? So, I mean, this time I played more relaxed, uh, I zipped the cue ball more, uh, actually I played a little bit too hard in this case, uh, and I actually I could generate more side spin on the shot. Very good uh, routine to do that, because you know, it helps you tremendously to improve your cue action, you know. This time I played play a perfect shot, you know, and you see the cue ball went there, I have a nice red, and then if it was pink, I can stand the shot and make position right there. Very good exercise to do. Uh, I will show you extreme side spin shot. Let's say you want to go to that side of the table, so you need to play a long, long back swing and generate lots of speed, you know. You see? And the cue ball bounces back to the you know, yellow, brown, or yellow, uh, sorry, green position. Good practice to do. Yeah. So guys, how many of you are in the live stream? 10 people right here. Okay, I did a 30 minutes live uh, session. So you, you know my contact. I have video courses as well. If you are snooker beginner, snooker basics, you know, I can uh, give you a three and a half hours video course which talks about uh, most important basics, okay? And uh, I also separate video tutorials, training methodology with text, and my personal coaching. I mean, you get amazing value for money, like right now the cost for the course is 138 euros. Right now on the COVID times, if you have access to the table on the club or your own personal table, then it's time to take because uh, definitely it will make your game better. And perhaps you might ask, you know, why I have to bother to buy a course because there are so many videos on YouTube. Yes, that's true. There is some videos on YouTube, you know, uh, me, uh, Barton Snooker, you know, you know, Break From Life. Of course there is, but you need a structure and structure gives you understanding what exactly after what kind of things to do. If you work on your stance, work on your stance. If you work on your bridge, work on the bridge. Like if you have a chaos and you don't have a system how to work, I mean, usually, very rarely people improve. Maybe they improve to certain level, but after some time they're a little bit stuck. And here you get a training videos, no bullshit. Spot on, three and a half hours long about every overall technique, like stance, grip, address position, aiming, angles, shot approach, pre-shot routine. Rest play, you know, cubo control, Q action. Gosh, and I made this in a structured way. Um, yeah, 
I mean, I have also other two courses, Sneaker Mastery, which is more like intermediate advanced stuff. You can also take a look there. I will leave, uh, leave description about the course over there. So that's about it. I hope that you guys enjoyed and uh, see you soon. Take care. Okay, I have to finish the stream.